That's good enough for now. I'm going to leave that leg alone and let's move up to this left arm. We're going to do something a little bit different here. Uh, at the start here, we're going to do a lot of the same process here. Let's build a new layer. We're going to call this one here left arm. The great thing about Mudbox is the layer system. Uh, unlimited layers. I can't stress that enough. Don't build everything on a layer. That's up to you if you really feel comfortable with that. I know a lot of amazing sculptors that some way, shape, or form just like to use minimum layers and they build all these really complex structures up on simple layers. That's fine. It's everyone's preference how you want to work. But I would definitely tell you to really spend some time to get used to adding new layers, creating new layers, whether you're painting or sculpting, it just gives you that control, right? It's almost like a procedural history that you can go back to uh, and work with. And uh, you keep kind of track of, of where you're going here. So, you know, I'm keeping a basic track here. Left structure for the, uh, the left leg there, a simple structure for the left leg, and I'm working on a simple structure for the left arm here as well. I'm just gonna build up some kind of shoulder plating on here, right? So that his shoulder, it looks almost like it's it's a bit of like an armored structure on there. Just kind of rough that in. That's fine. We're getting a little bit too thick, I think, on this arm here. So we'll just inverse control with my wax uh, tool here and bring that back in. And then let's continue along the arm here. You know, we can again we can kind of think of some anatomy here if we want to work with you know some bicep structure here we could pile up some of these stones some of these boulders or rocks here to kind of give him a look of you know something a little bit more thick or firm along his biceps or even his forearms to build him up same with his the quads on his legs or his chest take advantage of these materials you know get creative with some boulders and stones and different things Let's put a different shape one in here. So I'm just forming these simple structures, right? Nothing complex at all right now. Bring this guy down a little bit. And again, I don't, I'm not really caring right now about the overall shape. These are very rounded kind of non-realistic stones right now, but we're going to get into defining the detail here a bit later. And then in this elbow, I think something here that would work, just my own impression of it is, it would be something maybe a little bit of a kind of accumulation of smaller kind of stones in, in, in here that would be quite weathered down probably from moving along. I'm going to leave that guy alone because we're going to do something interesting here with his his forearm uh, on there. Build this guy up into here and put a simple stone, larger stone along this kind of the tricep area in the back of the arm. There we go. Now what we're going to do here on this forearm, the idea here with this base mesh, I've built these kind of little tendon-like structures that come out. That's going to be a root-like structure I want to wrap around the boulder. The base mesh I modeled up in, in Maya. Um, could be modeled up in any package actually, nothing special going on with that. And again, what I'm going to do with the wax brush here now is I'm going to define this. We want this forearm, the idea that in my thinking there with the forearm, the original concept here was that the forearm is kind of like a large club-like structure. Um, the rest of them is kind of comprised of these these rocks and boulders. Um, we're going to work a tree, some roots, through this guy, kind of weaving throughout him. But this forearm is kind of like a large club, something that maybe he can swing around, or it's you know it's just something that um, he's worked he's he's had over time. It's almost like one large boulder that these little roots that we'll get to later kind of intertwined and kind of form a crude hand around there. There we go, so build this kind of simple boulder structure in. And what I'm going to do with this is actually different than what I'm doing with the other rocks. I'm going to use my smooth brush. If I hold down the shift key on any of these tools here, I'm, access I'm accessing the smooth brush. So you'll see if I hold down shift and I start to paint, you'll see on the left, on my right here on my parameters, it's switching to what I have set in my smooth. I've got that set to 100. The stamp spacing's default, the buildup's at 50 there. So if I'm in that brush, I'm getting that. If I'm in my wax brush and I'm hitting shift, I'm accessing those parameters, whatever I have my smooth set to. So what am I doing here? I, I want this almost like it's a big piece of granite, right? Something that's been not necessarily polished down, but something that's been worn or weathered down. Build this guy up here. 
And what I'm going to do here um, throughout these these videos, just so that you're not watching me repeat myself over over the entire character with building up these stones and these rocks, I'm going to show you the base structure that I work with on this left leg and this left arm. And then we're going to move on to detailing these rocks a bit because I'm going to show you something that I've included here with the tutorial that is a uh, vector displacement stencil that you can use to build up some of these base forms. So what I'm saying is I'm not going to go and, you know, in the interest of time and, and build all these things up. We're going to focus on the technique here that is required or that I, I'm utilizing here in building these things up. So uh, let's build in this kind of boulder here. Whoops. Shift key, bring it down. And that's fine. We want to build that up into these kind of base forms and structures um, of these stones on here. What we're going to do next is we're going to work into how we're going to detail um, up this uh, these stones. Again, when you're working, up to you. Certainly put the mirroring tool on if you want. You could repeat what I'm doing on the other side. I'm purposely not using it just to keep them completely asymmetrical. I mean, you could certainly do what I'm doing here on both sides and then go in and customize those different uh, objects as you work um, with them here. But for now, I'm just working with them intentionally as asymmetrical. Um, so again, feel free to play with the tools and the settings. Um, we're going to get into what some of the fall off, the power of using fall off with a bunch of different tools here shortly. I'm going to leave this as this and move on to kind of detailing what we have here. So I'm going to end this one right here in our next video. We're going to jump into defining these kind of rough base rock and boulder structures into something a little more rock or stone like.